Welcome to the webinar. I'm Kevin McKenzie, Head of Product Marketing at Prodigal. Today we're going to be taking a look at tips for hiring and retaining top collections agents. I will go ahead and introduce our panelists very shortly. You can see them right now up on screen. And they're going to share with us some of their thoughts around the best ways to hire and retain agents, and then also their perspective on training and mentoring agents. And with that, I'll go ahead and welcome our first panelist, and that is Clint Dogg. He is the co-founder and CEO of Unifin. They're a global BPO firm with about a thousand employees in five countries. And right now they're mostly servicing direct issuers, banks, loan servicing companies, property managers, and debt buyers. So welcome to the webinar. Would you like to share anything more about yourself, Clint, or also Unifin? Kevin, okay, thanks for, uh, for, for having me here. and. Uh... Yeah, just really excited to share some of the best practices that we've been uh, we've been using for the last you know decade or so on hiring and retaining top collection agents. So, so yeah, thanks for having us. Definitely, yeah, thanks for being here. And also, we have Chris Schumacher with us. He is the president and CEO of Optio Solutions. So they're a leading national collections, collections agency focused on improving clients' ROI and also protecting brands. And right now, they're licensed and bonded to collect in all 50 states. So I'll welcome you to the webinar. Chris, would you like to add anything more about yourself and Optio? Yeah, just um, yeah. Thanks for having us, uh, Kevin. And you know, excited to present with Clint. You know, I think one of the perspectives that folks will get from this webinar is uh, a little bit about our agency. We're uh, ninety employees, so we're uh, you know small to mid size. And Clint's obviously got a thousand, so you'll hear uh, some different perspectives. I think from both of us. Um, I also serve as the uh, California Association of Collectors president, so I'm actually in Sacramento uh, currently. Uh, uh, yesterday, a group of us spent uh, time meeting with legislators and state senators to talk about some of the bills impacting our industry. So uh, get to jump from legislative issues uh, yesterday, uh, actually the last two days, and uh, jump into really about uh, our, our organization and our people. So excited to share a little bit about what we do at our company. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and move right into our first topic. So to kick us off, let's go to you, Clint, to get us started. And the first question I just wanted to bring to you is, when it comes to hiring and retaining collection agents, have you seen any particular approaches or tactics that have worked well for you over at Unifin? Yeah, so, um, so I started actually my career as a debt collector. Um, I was a debt collector for about a decade. So top collector at two different agencies. Um, and my partner and I, when we started the, uh, the firm, uh, both of us came from basically the floor. Um, so it helps to have that background, uh, to understand what makes a collector tick. Um, so that's, I think been a bit of a, uh, a secret sauce of ours, uh, for the, for a while now, um, historically, um, when we first started, I think we ended up hiring, um, experienced agents and uh that you know again experienced agents are great they know they can jump right in they, they kind of have an idea of exactly how the industry works but as we all know they do they do come with their um i don't want to say baggage but their own uh areas that need improvement that are kind of difficult to improve so what we did within the first couple of years we actually stopped searching for collectors and really started um looking to hire individuals that historically um, had some sort of quota that they had to meet. So that's worked for us over the course of the last 10, 12 years. But when you do that, there's obviously a little bit of a learning curve. So um, training them and creating a proper nesting program um, was vital in ensuring their success um, and basically how we manage them going forward. Um, you know, things like the tools that we use with Prodigal, for instance, to help score our agents' progression, identify areas that um, you know need coaching, um, come alongside them, um, and be able to assist them in those areas. That's been a, uh, I guess, an area that you know we could probably say has helped us a lot with our agents. Um, our average tenure is actually, um, I think, with collectors is somewhere close to three years. They do stick around. Um, a lot of that has to do with one, we do 
pay a competitive salary, um, prop, you know, offer proper and great benefits, um, and an uncapped bonus, which again, when we're trying to find individuals that are quota driven, uh, having that uncapped bonus is what they're really looking for at the end of the day. Um, again, when we're sourcing these agents, we try to ensure that we hire people that are driven for success. Um, outside of that, I don't want to say that there's anything else that we do. A lot of our agents do still, uh, we do have a process depending on the client, uh, where we hire them, we'll train and nest them in center. Um, and then we send them off to, uh, a work from home setting. That is something that I'm sure a lot of us will agree. A lot of our agents appreciate, um, again, it is client based. So depending on the client, um, but we will be able to retain what we've been able to retain, um, talent better that way. If they end up in a situation while we're, hand, when we're having their uh, monthly scorecards, they end up in a performance improvement situation. We will bring them back in center. Um, so that's typically the, the model that we've been running with. And it seems like a lot of other uh, agencies have been doing the same thing. Yeah. Now that's probably a great point now to, to bring in Chris for your perspective. So from your point of view, when it comes to hiring and retention approaches that have worked for you at Optio, have you tried some of the same things or different things? What kind of, what does that look like for you on your side? Yeah. So, um, you know, same as Clint, you know, I came out of college with a business degree and uh, had a friend working for an agency and started with, uh, started working for the agency just out of college. So started as a collector um, and was just fascinated with, um, you know, how things change and the opportunity you have to work with consumers on negotiation and really the, the competitive piece of it is what, what I really enjoyed. Um, and, and so, so knowing about what you do, the, 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 the day in and the day out of what an agent does, you know, what we've started to do is, um, you know, we do what uh, most most groups are doing. We do our recruiting. We run our ads through the Indeeds, through LinkedIn, through social media sites. And, and um, you know, uh, we, we then have a, we found some benefits with utilizing um, a, a, a human resource platform that allows us to really, what I would say is make the, the engagement process with applicants seamless, uh, all communication electronically through email, follow-up, booking of interviews. Um, and once we get to that part and, and have the interview, uh, if the supervisors um, feel that they, um, that they want to move them to the next step. We actually put them through a 20 minute uh, assessment video that actually they have to respond to. And so we found that going through this assessment, it does two things. It weeds out those that don't want to spend 20 minutes about your position. So they're just going out there and hitting up a lot of companies. Um, but it also, if they, depending on the experience that they've dealt with in the past, if they've worked in call centers, et cetera, it explains to them how a typical collection call would go. And then they've got to have some interaction with it. And so it's also also giving us an assessment. So once they're done, it runs them through four call scenarios. At the end, they get a score. So we actually are able to then make a decision on, is this person have the the, the ability to multitask active listening skills. Um, and, 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 and we're not, we're not having supervisors determine that during an interview process. We're actually running up through a little bit of a testimony. We found that that has helped us, um, really get applicants that, that make it through your training program, um, stay longer, have some of the, the skills that you need to be, um, on the phones. Um, and so we utilize a, a tool there on the front end. Um, you know, it's, it slows down hiring, I would say a little bit because, you know, you may have top of the line funnel, more people coming in, but now that you start to weed them out, but we've determined that that in the long term um, is a benefit. Um, and so, uh, you know, then once you get them aboard, you know, uh, I, I would say, you know, most agency owners out there that I talk to, you know, we all have the same kind of programs and packages with vacation, 401ks, with match. Um, and, and what I would, you know, one of the things that we've done with the the career advancement is, is, you know, we allow our, um, our agents, um, flexibility with flex schedules. Um, we do pay up to $1,200 a year towards higher education. So, you know, we've had agents that have spent three, four years with us, uh, while they're going to school and getting a degree. And then they, you know, they'll ultimately leave, uh, but they leave, uh, you know, we had an employee go become an attorney. We had one become a nurse. Uh, we had one become a CPA. And so, um, you know, we kind of have sat there and said, we'll pour into them as they're, you know, continuing their advancement. And um, we found a lot of success there. Uh, we do have a game room. Um, you know, I, you know, um, in my 
collection years, those really weren't something um, going on. Um, you know, you'd have a break room, but uh, you know, I find the game room is an area that people can go just, you know, grab their phone, sit down on a couch, big screen is there, there's video games and, and, and um, different, um, uh, games that they can just kind of just take their mind off of, of off of work. Um, so I think the atmosphere inside of the office is, is very important. Uh, you want your agents, uh, you know, feeling good about where they're at. Definitely. You know, before yeah. we jump on this slide, you know, we also do, uh, you know, content. I think I, I'm a huge proponent on contests. I think contests are uh, are things that get the team excited. Everyone's pushing for the same goal. Um, and, and so there's a whole bunch of different types of contests you can do. We just got done doing one in our Fargo office and in our Petaluma office uh, where we ordered 50 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. And basically you put the Girl Scout cookies out there and, and, and the supervisors come up with what a contest needs to be, you know, Girl Scout cookies is five bucks. You're helping them out. And, you know, people, you'd be shocked at how, uh, how, how people respond to a five dollar box of Girl Scout cookies. But it's the competitiveness um, and kind of the fun. Um, and then in our organization, uh, once a month, um, a group goes and serves at the Empire Redwood Food Bank. And so it's kind of like how you get back to your community. Um, and um, we have individuals that uh, that step up and do that uh, on a monthly basis. And then some come and join for a few times. Um, but uh, that's one of the things that we also do. Yeah, that's really interesting. And it starts to tie in. So retention, of course, does tie in with this concept around training and mentoring. So that can be everything from ramping up new hires, but also keeping them up to speed as policies or regulations may change, make sure people are happy, comfortable in their position. So maybe now we'll jump back to you, Clint, to have your thoughts around this. Any recommendations on how you've seen to best ramp up, mentor, retrain agents whenever needed. Any thoughts around that that you want to share that have worked for you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I first want to say if there was a quota tied to a box of Samoas, I would definitely be driving for that <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I said it earlier, we, we typically have a hands-on approach. Um, you know, I know a lot of companies are trying to use um, more tools, gamification, things like that. I, I just, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit old school when it comes to this. And it's just, it's one of those things where if it's not broke, you know, let's not try to fix it. Um, so I, I feel like the hands-on approach really helps well. Um, just having that initial training that allows them um, to have uh, an understanding, right? So the theory behind collections, behind the talk off, having those, um, that tools training that basically leads into that nesting period. And we just find that nesting period being very important. You know, historically, a nesting period, I remember when I was starting as a, as a collector, it just meant the lower quota fee, right? Nobody really came alongside and kind of showed you this is what you need to do. Nesting isn't just basically calling it a period of time when you have that reduced quota fee. It's also a time where these agents literally come off the phones, come alongside a QA person or a supervisor, they go over some actual data. And again, like I said earlier, using those prodigal scorecards really help us to be able to, you know, again, if it's managed properly, if it's set up properly, have the right meta tags, go in there and be able to um, understand, uh, you know, where that agent's area of improvement is, what they did really well, obviously, and then where that area of improvement is. Um, and then putting together proper glide paths for them to hit and attain those improvement goals um, we find, you know, really beneficial. Um, a lot of the times, and you know, historically in other places that I've worked, you get thrown out into the kind of thrown out into the ocean, and you got to learn how to swim. Um, and that just creates a lot of, you know, fear, animosity. There could be mistakes that happen with agents. They end up, especially nowadays, with some of the agents, they, you know, might not appreciate that they leave. So we find that, you know, training and actually mentoring actually helps with reducing our attrition as well. Um, so that's that's the first thing. Uh, number two, tenured agents, uh, we continue to try to put together glide paths for them for growth. Um, if there's opportunities for growth, we'll definitely give them an opportunity for it. Uh, we do harbor a promote within culture. Um, I wanna say, I think it's about 85% of our managers and above uh, were promoted from within over the years. Uh, so that is something that we try uh, really hard to help. We've had collectors become dialer managers. We've had collectors become people on the strategy side, go into reporting, 
um, quality assurance, you know, obviously supervisors, managers staying within operations, going to training. So these are areas that we feel like, um, you know, individuals, if they want that opportunity to grow, um, we'll give them and basically enable them to have that, um, that, you know, whether it's the tools or the training needed to be able to take that next step. Um, you know, some collectors, as we all know, like to stay collectors. They like the, they like the bonus. Um, that's what they, you know, they thrive on and that's great. And we want to continue to try to, you know, push them in an area where they're comfortable at, but the folks that want to have that opportunity to, to move forward, you know, that is something that we try really hard to instill within, um, as opposed to going outside. They know our system, they know our tools, they know the way we operate. Um, and it just creates a really good, um, environment. Yes. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. Do you see similar things on your side, Chris, as far as agents being promoted from within or is it primarily, and maybe it's, maybe it's a mix. Maybe some people do stay for that four years and then move on to other things or also to what types of approaches have you used with training and mentoring people while they're with your organization that have been successful? Yeah. So I think, you know, with, with, with training, you know, one of the things that I think, uh, most organizations uh, and leaders will see inside their organizations is you've got employees that are are great collectors, you've got employees that are great supervisors, and then you have employees that are great trainers. Um, you know, one of the things that we spent a long time on um, and, 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 and actually moved away from it was we had our supervisors doing so much of the training and, and, and what we've been able to shift, and some of this is also due to changes in technology, um, but what we've been able to do is we've actually shifted where we do have a national sales trainer that's responsible for all training. And it's not just training of the new folks. However, that's a, a, a key um, and a, a big time consuming part of this individual's job. But they also are responsible for our veteran training um, and continuing to keep people up on policies, procedures, et cetera. Um, and, and what we've found is that when you have one person that owns it, you know, and then you start giving them the additional tools of speech analytics um, and, and, and they, they can then uh, train and then show results to the, uh, to the agents, uh, we found that that's been very beneficial. Um, examples would be, you know, with speech analytics, the nice thing is, is that you're able to sit there and work with an agent, whether they're new or even if they're veterans, and talk about these are some of the things that we're seeing that the data is telling us on the, you know, the, the, the 200 phone calls you had the other, you know, yesterday. We're seeing that on those ones, you did a great job on the introductions, the disclosures, and then you get into the right party verification. Um, and then, and, but we're not seeing in there that you're asking for payment in full or you're not offering a payment plan before you get off the phone call. Or in that phone call, you didn't ask for updated information on an address or email or texting, consent, et cetera. And so the nice thing about being able to use that technology on the training is we train them off of scripts but then the technology the next day can give us the, the data. It's not one person's personal perception. It's not somebody that, well, I'm kind of listening to them on the phone. This is computers that have analyzed the data of what the speech came out and said, and then we're able to give it to them and show them areas that, hey, great job here. Keep it going. Here's an area that can be a work on. And then when they see that work on, the nicest thing about it is they can turn it around the next day. So if all of a sudden they're not asking for it, let me go ahead and update your address or let me go ahead and verify this. Um, they're able to sit there and change that right away and see the difference. And, and um, the behavior of the of our agents, it's like, you know what? They know they can change things quickly. This isn't something like I can do it later. So uh, we've had a lot of success um, utilizing speech analytics with regards to our training. Um, the other thing we've done is um, we, uh, a, a year ago, um, um, launched a, so we have two call centers. Um, we're in office in those call centers, but we did um, launch a, a work from home model, um, allowed us um, to, to get to different parts of the country um, and hire remote agents. And so we utilize a technology there that allows a collaboration online via video um, where the agents working from home can actually see their supervisor and can ask their supervisor a question, whether they wanna ask it to them over, over the phone or they wanna ask it to them via chat. So it allows them to engage um, utilizing that. So uh, it, the, the concept behind it is the trainer can actually be logged in and see and work with um, 
their, their, their remote agents, no matter where they are in the United States. And so uh, the nice thing about that is, you know, take it pre-COVID, the, the, you know, the thoughts about how do you train somebody that's at home? How do you make sure that they're doing what you want them to do? The tools that we have today um, in the last five years um, drastically change um, the ability to be successful with really mentoring and helping, encouraging. Um, you know, I, I always explain, this is a tough job, right? You know, it's, it's our job to train them, um, but, you know, we got to motivate, encourage, um, you know, and, and really be there to assist, especially if they're offsite. Of course. Yeah, and that brings up an interesting question as we move into the Q&A portion. I can basically direct this back to you, Clint, on your side. So from your perspective, especially if you have agents working remote, maybe they're all back in the office, but how important to you is it having the right software and tools on your side and how impactful is that for you and your organization? Oh, extremely um, important. Um, so we have, I think we're about 70, 30 right now um, at home and in center. Um, again, it's really driven by client. And like I was saying earlier, training, nesting is done in center and any performance um, improvement needs typically will drive that agent back in center so that they have that um, uh, those individuals alongside them, helping them out. Um, but technology has obviously been huge. Um, when when COVID first happened, we already had a at-home uh, model set up. Um, we are very, uh, uh, when it comes to our digital strategy, what we do as an organization, we're very, uh, I would say, technical forward, I guess. Um, we have our own uh, proprietary software that you know allows for debt negotiation on tools charted off accounts. Uh, we have our own suite of services um, that we've created. Um, you know, again, using tools like Prodigal um, really allow us and help us to be able to hone in um, and manage. I know, uh, Chris, you mentioned a tool that allows for uh, that in-center feel engagement with agents that are at home is extremely important. Um, it's not just managing productivity and efficiency, but it's also that engagement piece allowing them to feel like they're a part of uh, the organization. We're in five different countries, so it's really important for us that people get to feel and understand what Unifin is and they're a part of that team. Um, you know, so these things are, um, are extremely important. And I think technology allows us to achieve, um, you know, a lot of what we couldn't do even a decade ago. So, yeah, now that's great insight there. Okay. I see, I have a, a few specific questions about which types of software and platforms are used. So I just wanna call out that we have those questions logged behind the scenes. What I'll do is go ahead and get you those answers post-webinar. So whoever's asked those questions, rest assured, we'll get you those answers. I also have a question here that's looking at, so when an agent is doing a, a great job and you've identified them as a top performer, do you have any suggestions or ideas on how you could run with those best practices to help to replicate them across your workforce? And maybe Chris, if you want to jump in to answer that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, we all wish that if, if we could clone our best collectors, our jobs would be so much easier. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't do that. But, you know, I, I, I think it really has to do with the um, identifying those agents that are succeeding in your organization or um, showing the attributes that they're they're continuing to want to learn and get better. And I would say pour your focus into those individuals. Um, you know, it's it, it's unfortunate that, you know, some of the things that I see and I hear is that, um, you know, super uh, managers and supervisors get frustrated with regards to um, the uh, some of the agents that maybe they're trying to tr train up and coach up, but they're putting their focus on the wrong ones. And sometimes it's the ones that they, they, they end up being the problem um, agents that, that get 80% of the supervisor or trainer's attention. And it, you really got to flip that over and not give the attention there and really um, identify the agents that you sit there and say, they're doing, they're, they're, they're following, they, they're, they're um, encouraged to try to get better and, and, and identify those. And, and I say the same thing, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, 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 in a sport, if you're trying to train and develop a sports team uh, to be better and perform better, you identify who those team players are and, 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 
you know, help them with the skills that you want them to get better because they're going to be the ones that move you forward and win you a championship, uh, not necessarily the ones that are making, you know, um, you know, could be problematic every, I mean, I, I, I hear more stories about, well, I'm dealing with this agent and it's kind of like, well, why are you dealing with that agent? You know, tell them this is, this is what's supposed to happen. This will be done. And then, then they won't take as much of your time. So really identify the agents that, um, that really want to get better, work with them. Um, and, and, and if, you, if you build that culture, the, 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 the people that, that, um, that maybe aren't um, you know following the lead and wanting to get to that next step, um, th they either make it or they don't. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I think I have an interesting thought here as we're getting close to the end of the half hour, and this one I'll direct back to to you, Clint. And it's just asking. So, say someone leaves this webinar and has to decide what one thing can they try to do to attract new talent. So, if they had to pick only one and had to just give it all they had, <laughs> is there any idea that or any recommendation you would have around what that might be? What they should try first thing as their first experiment to bring in new talent? <laughs> uh, that's a tough question. Uh, <laughs> just one thing. Um, <laughs> You know, um, I've always been a firm believer of allowing uh, the collector to live a, you know, uh, at a wage that is, uh, you know, above standard, right? I mean, whatever that standard is. Um, and that is something that I could say personally, um, you know, collections help me out of, you um, you know, uh, not really knowing where I was going in life. I was in my young 20s. So I would say a, a, a strong bonus plan um, that, you know, really helps uh, agents uh, achieve and be uh, rewarded for attaining quota. I think that if there was yeah. one thing. Nice. Thanks for that thought there. Yeah. All right, and with that, this is taking us pretty much right to the end of the half hour. I know this always flies by. So I just wanted to take a second to thank both of you, both Chris and for Clint, for taking your time to show up today and to share your insight with us. We definitely appreciate that. So thank you both again for that. Have a great rest of the day.